I'm Paul McKibben. Um, I've been working with Drupal since 2007, so the Drupal 5-ish time frame. Uh, and I run my own one-person consultancy. So if you would like me to help you with your Alexa integration later, I'm, you know, please talk to me. Um, I've done sites all the way from Drupal 5 on, and I like cheap canned beer. So here's the, yes, sure, if it's bothering you. Thanks, Damien. Uh, backstory, uh, what, what is this cheap canned beer thing anyway? I bought the domain cheapcannedbeer.com many years ago, and just, I've been sitting on it for, for quite a while. And you know, I, I joke around with my friends and my wife, and they, oh, I've got to do something with that domain. You know, it would just be funny. Uh, that the whole idea came around because you know, when, when my wife and I go out, she'll get this you know, fancy cocktail you know, with you know, the, you know, all, these exotic ingredients, and I'll get a PBR or a Miller or something like that, you know, whatever the, the $3 beer is on the menu. So you know, joking around about this, I bought that domain of four, you know, about four years ago and been just wondering what I'm going to do with it. And Alexa came around and these other voice-enabled devices I also thought about, gosh, it'd be fun to play with that. And I put the two things together and had a uh, Reese's peanut butter cup mo moment. You know, I, I put your, you put my Alexa in my cheap canned beer. And so I thought I'd try and combine the two and see what I could do with it and uh, use Drupal to be the uh, content engine for it. So that's why. It's just a little fun side project for me. So I've got a beta up now of cheapcannedbeer.com. You, you can go look at it if you want. Um, it's, uh, there's not much to it right now because it's a side project and like many people you know, who all work for a living and have families, side projects usually get the last priority. But I do have a little trivia game on it with a few questions in it and I've integrated Alexa with it and uh, uh, plan to publish this skill uh, shortly. I didn't want to publish it uh, yesterday because I was worried it would get frozen before I could present it and I uh, didn't want to have to deal with that. So it's not published yet, but it will be. Oops. Um, so what we're going to demonstrate in a moment here is using my little uh, Amazon Echo Tap, we're going to talk to my Drupal site, Cheap Can Beer, and uh, play trivia through it. So I'm going to ask to ask Cheap Can Beer to play trivia. Alexa, this guy is going to send a message to you, Alexa Voice Services in the cloud, which in turn will send a JSON request to my Drupal site. The Drupal site will respond back with the appropriate response for my question, which will uh, go through Alexa, and Alexa will uh, respond. So let's give it a try here. Ask Cheap Can Beer to play trivia. Here is your question. Which beer brand once placed newspaper advertisements aimed at young mothers, claiming the malt in the beer supplies nourishing qualities, the hops act as an appetizing, stimulating tonic, and obviously baby participates in the benefits. The choices are A. Pabst Blue Ribbon, B. Blacks, C. Olympia, D. Old Milwaukee. What is your answer? Does anybody know? Old Milwaukee. Sorry, your answer, yep, was incorrect. <laughs> the correct answer is B. Blacks. An online image search for Blacks will turn up multiple clippings of this advertisement aimed at nursing mothers. Would you like to play again? No. Thanks for playing. Um, so this talk to my Drupal site, actually. Um, let me get out of here and show it to you real quick. Um, it's a different question. Let's see if I can get this other one to come up, the one that we just had. Yeah, here it is. So this is all on my Drupal site. It, it, uh, Alexa read this word for word, provided the choice as letter for letter. and. Uh, Here's the answer and the picture of the ad that we were talking about. Like magic, right? So how do we make this work? Um, we have to create what's called an Alexa skill. Uh, Amazon calls apps for the Alexa a skill. You know, basically, the idea is you're, making, you're creating something that Alexa can do for you. So uh, you have to create a custom Alexa skill using the Alexa skills kit on the Amazon developer console. Uh, you define something called an interaction model, which I'll go into in a second, and uh, you point that to your Drupal site. And then on the Drupal side, you have to make sure that you're actually put a sh pushed out to a web server. Well, you know, Alexa can't talk to your local machine because it needs an internet-enabled endpoint. You must have SSL. 
uh, on your Drupal site, you install the Alexa module and an accompanying PHP library, and then you write a custom module that depends on it to uh, handle your Alexa events and, and you know, all the logic behind what you want Alexa to do. Oops, I keep doing the wrong gesture here. Um, so the Alexa skills kit, you have to sign up for an account on uh, developer.amazon.com, and uh, you go through that interface to create a new skill, uh, and it'll give you what's called an application ID. Um, on your Drupal site, you install the Alexa, Alexa module, and there's a PHP library you need to install uh, that gives you instructions on the project page on Drupal.org. Uh, and you set that same uh, application ID on your Drupal site. And then, like I said, you need to develop a custom module that actually handles all the logic. I wrote a custom module that handled all that trivia uh, stuff there. Um, you have to point Alexa at your Drupal site. So this is uh, on the Amazon Developer Console. You, you get two choices of the service endpoint. This uh, Lambda thing is actually internal to Amazon that you put on S3. Um, and if you want to point to your Drupal site, your only choice is HTTPS. Um, and then you'll see down here there's a callback uh, slash Alexa slash callback. That's coming from the Alexa module. It creates that route. You point your Alexa skill to that uh, uh, URL on your Drupal site. So let's go into how Alexa skills are, are constructed. Jeez, people are calling me. Go away. Um, so uh, when you're creating an Alexa skill, you have to give it what's called an invocation name. Uh, it's the name that users will use to activate your skill. You may recall when I did this a moment ago, I said, ask Chief Can Beer to play trivia. My invocation name is Chief Can Beer. Uh, you also define what's called an interaction module, and that's uh, the words and the phrases that you use to interact. So, um, and then an intent is what somebody wants to do. So in this case, play trivia was the intent. Um, here's a more uh, simple example that I also have implemented on here, is just I don't have enough content to really <laughs> make it fun to demo. Uh, eventually, I'm gonna have a bunch of beer brands and beer companies put into this site describing the history and stuff, and I've created an intent called Tell Me About that uh, Alexa can use. If somebody could ask Alexa to ask Cheap Can Beer to tell me about Coors. And what that intent will do is look up Coors on my site and basically spit out what I put in the node content. Um, the, uh, to uh, invoke an intent, you use an utterance, and you can define multiple utterances for the same intent because not everybody says things the same way. So uh, I could say, ask Cheap Can Beer to tell me about Coors, ask Cheap Can Beer about Coors. There's probably a bunch of other phrases I could come up with that would work. You'll notice I'm using the word title in brackets there. Uh, that is an example of what, uh, what they call a slot. And you can kind of think of that as a parameter for the intent. So, you know, tell me about Molson, tell me about PBR, uh, that I'm just filling in the parameter, and that would get passed to uh, the code that handles my intent. Um, so you actually need to, to write code to handle those intents now. So you have the Alexa module that implements that route that I showed you, the Alexa callback. Uh, that callback will dispatch an Alexa event request, which is a, you know, part of the symphony uh, event dispatching system in Drupal 8. And then you can write a custom module to catch that event and handle it. And that's what the custom module does. Um, I believe, yes, that's the next part is to show you the code. So here's my, this is a, a request subscriber uh, class that's in my custom module. And it catches the Alexa event here. And it checks the intent name of what we're calling. You know, we demonstrated play trivia a little bit earlier, and I've got a function that handles it. And I talked about tell me about. In this tell me about event, we're gonna get the title slot. And then I've got a tell me about method that will basically look up a node with that title and return a message. Either I can't find that or basically the body of the node. And then respond with that message. That's really as simple as that. Now, trivia is a little more complex. You know, it's not a simple question and answer, you know, not a simple call and response. 
you know, you can see there were multiple turns in the, in the trivia demo I did. You know, play trivia. Here's a question. What's your answer? Here's my answer. Well, it's right or it's wrong. Here's the real answer. Would you like to play again? You know, there was a lot of turns to that conversation in this intent. And so Amazon provides what's called a dialogue model. Um, like, you know, dialogue is a multi-turn conversation. So here's a screenshot of the play trivia intent from my uh, dashboard. And you'll see that I've got a slot defined called trivia answer, but the, unlike the tell me about title thing, that slot doesn't appear in any of my utterances that, that kicks off this intent. You know, it's just play trivia or ask a trivia question. So where do we get that answer slot? Um, so you know, we say play trivia. Alexa responds with, here's your question. And it uses a directive that uh, Amazon defines called dialogue.elicitslot. That is how uh, we uh, then process how the user answers. So I get my answer. Uh, that answer goes into the, the, the answer slot that was defined for this intent. Uh, Alexa, you know, basically sends a message back to Drupal with the answer, and then Drupal can process that answer and decide, is it right, is it wrong? Here's the correct answer. Do you want to play again? But do you want to play again? Uh, I'm sending another directive called dialogue confirm intent. Basically, confirm intent is, you know, are we done or not? Um, I say, no, I don't want to play again. That means we're done with the intent and Alexa responds, thanks for playing, and the intent is done. If I said yes, then we'd go back to here's your question, and it would choose another random question. So let's look at play trivia here. Um, so I've got this handle trivia method. Let's see, this code, I, I, uh, the screen size is so large, I had already sized up the, the code so that it would be readable, but it's scrolling off the screen a little bit. Um, but we got the request coming in. We're checking first to see if uh, there's a confirmation status being passed in with the request. Basically, that you know that that would be the end of the that that's actually the end part of the uh, um, interaction. Let me go back to that. So we're basically checking first: Are we already done? This no part here. If we're not already done, if we are done, we'll say thanks for playing. But if we're not already done, then we'll keep going. Next thing we're going to check is to see if there's a question associated with a session. In our, you know, we, we maintain a session as part of it handling this intent. Is there a, uh, a note ID in this session that represents the question the user was asked? And uh, if there is not an, a note ID or if the dialogue state is that we've just started the intent, then we will ask a new question. And so we have a, a method that defines, you know, just basically looks up a random trivia question node and asks a question. And then finally, if, uh, if we have the note ID and it's not a new question, that means that the user attempted an answer. So uh, we you know, check the answer. So let's go ahead and do the first part here. Let's look at this ask new question. Um, I've got a function called random question picker that just picks a random trivia question, loads the node. I've got another function that formats basically, basically on the node fields, based on the node fields, the, the question to ask, uh, sets the node ID in a session attribute of the, the request, and then call, and then, uh, adds this dialogue elicit slot uh, directive to tell the user that the, your next utterance is going to be the answer to this question. Um, so if we go back to this uh, diagram here, the user asked the question, we generated the question, and we send back the question with this dialogue elicit slot directive so that Alexa will know that the next thing we say is meant to be an answer to the question. So when the user answers the question, we'll get a new event with the same intent and with the session node in there. So the node will get passed in, we'll load it. Um, I can go deeper into this, but basically I've got a series of paragraphs representing the answers. Uh, uh, and so I'll, I'll iterate through the paragraphs, give them letters, you know, A, B, C, D in order, and have Alexa read them. Uh, and so when the user utters that answer back, we got to once again figure out which letters go with which answer, determine what the, what the user's choice was, 
And uh, if they got it right, we respond with, yes, you got it right. Otherwise, we respond with, sorry, your answer, blah, is incorrect. And then either way, we talk about the correct answer. We have a little bit of an explanation with the correct answer, and we add that to the response. And we finalize that with, would you like to play again? And we send a uh, confirm intent, a dialogue confirm intent directive with that. So that's the answer came in. We processed it. We told them if it was right or wrong. We explained it. And now we're sending back, do you want to play again? And the user will answer yes or no. So that's where we get back up to the, the beginning of the event handling function where we're checking to see if, if there was a confirmation status passed in and if it was a uh, yes, we want to play again or no, we don't want to play again. So I know I've, I went through a bunch of code here. Any, any questions, any, anything anybody wants to know? Exactly. It's a, it's a content type uh, called trivia question. Um, I can, oops, where did I have that? Let me get out of here. So this is what it looks like from the, an external user. Um, but uh, if I log in, The, the content type, the question's in the body. We have paragraphs that uh, describe the choices. Uh, one of those choices will be marked as the correct answer. And then uh, the, the description of the correct answer is in this correct answer description field. Is that labeled in the database? I'm sorry? The That's that? actually uh, generated uh, uh, in custom code that actually, you know, it'll actually take the answers in order and put A, B, C, or D in front of them, or E, or whatever, you know, however many you choices you put in, it'll go up, it'll allow up to 26 of them. <laughs> um, so if we, you know, if we look at an example, uh, let's bring up a trivia question and edit it. So if you look at an example of, uh, you know, what it looks like on the back end, uh, this is the question that Alexa will read. These are the choices. One of them's marked correct. And I can reorder these, I can add more, and it'll automatically, you know, the, the theme code will present it on here, and then my custom Alexa code will, will figure it out, uh, which one's A, which one's B, which one's C, just based on the order. Um, if you wanna see that code where it uh, asks a question, Format quick trivia question, where is that? There it is. So I know it's hard to see because it's scrolling off the screen, but it basically goes through each choice and increments this letter index from A to Z as it reads off the choices. Other questions? No, it's just random. Okay. Yep. Th right now, it's just random. Um, very simple. All right. So we did all that already. Um, so this dialogue model, you know, elicit slot, elicit confirmation, all that. Um, I found a problem with the Alexa module and the accompanying PHP library. They don't support dialogue directives right now. So if you were to try and put something together right now with what's available on Drupal.org and what's available in the, the additional PHP library, you too would have to do what I did, which was hack them. Um, I'm hoping to uh, uh, clean up the changes I made and then contribute them in the next few days. But uh, it didn't have any concept of handling these intents. I had to add that in myself which I found strange. Um, so really, uh, we're pretty much wrapping up here because it's been taking nearly as long as I thought it would. Uh, we can play a couple more, we can add a couple more trivia questions. Yeah. Is there, is there anything set up yet to get information? I'm sorry? From, is there anything set up to get information 
from Alexa into Drupal, like, uh, could you have it sign up for something, and then it automatically puts, Alexa automatically puts your Am their Amazon account into your, you know, Drupal site or anything like that? Uh, that's a good question. I'm not sure how the account integration would work. I, I'm sure it's possible. Uh, it probably is accomplished using OAuth or something like that. Um, there is a way to share creden credentials. Um, I you know, saw some check boxes on the uh, skill dashboard for that, uh, but I haven't tried it. Um, but as far as like, you know, putting information into Drupal through Alexa, your custom module can do what it wants. So, you know, if, if you can code it up in your custom module, it can be done. Uh, so yeah, this is you know really just kind of scratch at the surface. It's like I said, uh, early days. Uh, it's obviously early days for the Alexa module and early days for the accompanying PHP library. Um, so I, I, I think there's a lot of potential here that uh, can be unearthed. Um, any qu any further questions? But otherwise, I can all you know, I'll either let you all out early or we can play a couple uh, trivia beer questions if you want. Here, let's let's do one more. <laughs> Ask Cheap Can Beer to play trivia. Here is your question. Which beer brand once placed newspaper advertisements aimed at young oh, mothers already, already claiming this one. the malt in the beer supplies nourishing <laughs> qualities? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do a new one. Ask Cheap Can Beer to play trivia. Here is your question. In 1978, Arthur Priceoff recorded a song entitled Here's to Good Friends. In the late 1970s and early 1980s, a beer brand used this song with modified lyrics as their jingle, with Price Ock singing it. Which beer brand was this? The choices are A. Michelob, B. Low and Brow, C. Miller, D. Budweiser. What is your answer? What? B. Sorry, your answer, good, was incorrect. <laughs> the correct answer is B. Low and Brow. If you were alive in the 70s and 80s, you may remember hearing, here's to good friends, tonight is kinda special, in low and brow ads. <laughs> For the jingle, Price Ox song lyric, tonight, let us begin again, was changed to tonight, let it be low and brow. Would you like to play again? Yes. Here is your question, during prohibition in the United States. This Wisconsin-based brewing company started producing a pasteurized processed cheese spread using a variation of their brewery brand name. After Prohibition ended in 1933, they sold their cheese-making operation to Kraft. Which brewing company did this? The choices are A. Pabst B. Miller C. Schlitz D. Blatz What is your answer? A. Yes, you got it right. The correct answer is A. Pabst. During Prohibition, Pabst produced Pabst at processed cheese spread. The product was immensely successful. Pabst sold over 8 million pounds of the product before they sold it to Kraft at the end of Prohibition. Kraft continued to produce Pabst at cheese until at least the 1940s. The cheese's similarity to Velveeta, also produced by Kraft since 1927, is probably the reason the brand was discontinued. Would you like to play again? No. Thanks for playing. So, yeah. Um, any other questions? Have a little bit of fun. Yeah. Um, some, some other use cases for Alexa skills, other than like playing trivia games. <laughs> um, what, what, what are the other um, possibilities um, that are available? Can you do like commerce? <coughs> Could you see the viability of like setting up a Drupal commerce site and then having to be able to purchase stuff through Alexa? Is that like something? I, I think that would be entirely possible. Um, you can already buy stuff on Amazon through Alexa. Um, there, there are stories of, of kids ordering, you know, playhouses and stuff on their parents' Echo devices. Um, but um, there are, not only are they integrating Alexa into devices like these, but uh, they're talking about integrating it into your car. So you could use it to get a traffic report, maybe. You know, if you had a, a site that had traffic, you know, real-time traffic reports on it, you could use it to get news. Um, if, you know, if you had a news site, um, really, I think anything that uh, you can think of that you could support some kind of voice interaction on, uh, you could use it on Drupal with Alexa. How did your uh, development workload work out with, you know, because it has to be a public endpoint, right? Yeah, yeah and 
that's a very good question. Debugging is hard. Um, I wound up using Drupal uh, database logging to try and catch things when I could. Uh, but yeah, I thought that when I was you know encountering bugs, a lot of times I couldn't debug it at all. You know, couldn't you know stop to hit breakpoints, do anything like that. I had to actually just take my best guess as what might be happening, look at the documentation, figure out if the message structures were right. Um, I had one problem where uh, when you gave a trivia answer, when Alexa passed that message into Drupal, it would add a period on the end of it for no particular reason. And so A period didn't match the letter A, and so it was the wrong answer. <laughs> so I, you know, all sorts of fun little things that uh, I had to find creative ways to debug. Um, I, I would say it's probably the most frustrating part of the development experience right now is that it's not, you know, it's very hard to debug with the voice interface. There are tools out there that you can use locally where you pass, you know, you type in the commands and it, you can see how it handles the commands. But when it, you know, a real human voice does funny things and, you know, then a, a room full of voices also does funny things as you've seen. So it's... Any other questions? Have you done anything with any other voice like theory or Google? Not yet. Um, That's, I mean, I haven't done a ton of research, but from what I can tell, Amazon is the only one where you actually develop a specific skill for it, whereas I'm not sure you can do the same with Google or uh, uh, Siri. I, I'm not even in the, other than the having a Mac, I'm not really into the Apple ec ecosystem. You know, I don't use Siri at all, so I don't know much about it. The, the closest thing I've seen is I, uh, Google now has a thing where you can set up your own, like, when a command happens, do this thing. It's, it's sort of like a, you know. I'll have to look into that, because I'd be curious. I, that, that's, I'd be curious to see how that is, because I use the Google Assistant on my phone a lot. Other questions? Or experiences, you know, people who played with this or similar kinds of things. Cool, well, thank you all for, for coming and I uh, really appreciate it.